glad that we don't have like live webcam feeds for this podcast because I'm just wearing sweatpants right now. It's great. I'm so comfy right now. Ugh. Better than just undies. <laughs> if kind play card is acceptable as long as your feet isn't up in the air. <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, you guys haven't heard the joke, eh? Ah, uh, uh, a few weeks back, me and Daniel we went to an AC event, the Geek Fan launching, right? So after the event, Acer gave us these uh, t-shirts. They are in this mm-hmm. this cylindrical, I say like containers. So basically, mm-hmm. when I saw it, I say, eh, uh, it, it's written Predator yeah, with the logo and stuff like that, the black logo and on the white. Mm-hmm. So I say. Eh, can play card ke ni? <laughs> I mean, imagine eSports branded kind play card. Oh, yeah, man. Predator logo, awesome, man. Predator logo as well. You are laughing like two minutes, good. Lepas dua jauh. Okay, I think we should probably start soon before I fall asleep. <laughs> That's basically the starting actually. <laughs> oh, this, that's great. That's great. Kain uh, play card cold open is the best cold open. The start point was kind play card. And hello, hello, hello. And welcome to Dia.log, the Game of Matters podcast. Where we oh. attempt. Yeah. Where we attempt. The keyword here is attempt. Attempt. To talk about the things that matter the most. Video games. Um, video games are the best things. Don't, you don't need friends or family. You just need video games. Just keep buying video games. All the video games. All, all the time. of the video games. And on this lovely episode, we have our lovely recurring panelists from the GamerMatters.com crew. We haven't, haven't checked up. gotten rid of us yet. No, because we can't <laughs> find anyone else. <laughs> What's up? We have Wam. Say hi, Wam. Uh, and next up we have Daniel. Say hello, Daniel. Hi. And to round it off, we have Anan. Say hello, Anan. What up? And hello. joining them is your lovely host, Amirul Macrona Sashraf, or you can call it Mac, which is short for me on. And let's get the show on the road. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Well. That's the intro. And as you can see, if you are watching the YouTube stream or the YouTube archive of this uh, lovely, lovely podcast, you can see we have upped our production value. We sold out. Yes, <laughs> we got money. <laughs> Please give I us more money. Sold out. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to sell out though. Companies, find us. We'll sell out for money. No, seriously, we need money. We'll shill for money. We'll chill for money. Anything. Tonka Ali, sure. Kickapoo Joy Juice, sure. I mean, Tonka uh, Ali and Camp Laker has pretty strong brand synergy, you know that? We can totally yeah. put away on that, don't love it. Hold on, I'm, I'm going through my phone to look for other apps that I will gladly chill for. Uh, no Wukong, okay? No Wukong. <laughs> no, no what? 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 Wukong. You don't know Wukong. Oh, so no, Wukong. I don't know. It's a gambling app. Gam- uh, gambling. Oh god, no, please. That that rattles in my email too much, man. I have to filter them out. We have plenty of those deals. Oh wow, I, I did not know that. Oh, we uh, do. Periscope, yeah, Periscope, call us. Vero, call us. Bingo? Uh, Vero. Vero True Group Social. Two. Yeah, Vero True Social, right? Mm. Groove 2, call us. Tinder, call us. Coffee Meets Bagel, call us. OK Cupid, sure. Honkai Impact, call us. We are learning a lot of worms install apps today. <laughs> 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 well, allegedly, I, I, I'm not saying that is true. It's an alleged. Oh, I'm, I'm saying it's true, yeah. OK, Listen, so. Man. so I, so talking about truth, I want to hear the truth about the event called TAGCC. Wom, what is it and where? Uh, why did you go to that? 
And also okay. transition. <laughs> so, TAGCC, right? It's new convention. Uh, apparently, it has the backing of a lot of like, like premium stores, like shop toys and stuff, like the the ones that sell the expensive statues. Like they cost an entire semester of tuition, but they they look so pretty. Yeah. That's a that's the one. Uh ah, so, it appears. Production values. Production value. And so first off, I got, I gotta tell the story of how I got there, right? Because this is an important lesson. I do not stay anywhere near Mid Valley. I do stay near an MRT. I had to take a train to KL Central and I was like, oh, I could take an Uber to, I could take a Grab to the MRT, uh, to Mid Valley, or I could take the commuter. And my dad was like, oh, commuter's not so bad now, actually. We should go, you should take the commuter. I took the commuter, instant regret. Train was slow, it was fucking hot. And there was this dude next to me on the train who refused to sit on the seat. He sat on the floor. And I was like, I was like, no, dude, take, take, take my seat. And he was like, no, 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 uh, my leg is in, I need to bandage it or whatever. And then I refused to sit back down. He's like, no, no, sit down. I'm like, no, no, you know what's going to happen? Because, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, I dress, uh, I do not dress modestly. I dress, like, I wear a blazer and a cool t-shirt or whatever. And so... I'm like, I just know someone is, someone is wait, wait, someone's audio is on. And you can see it on the screen right now. So because we have this new layout, you can now, if you are confused on who is talking and who is not, our video feed now features Discord integration. So now you know where the noise is coming. I didn't, I didn't see, I wasn't paying attention. Mm. Okay, yeah, continue so I was on. Like, I was like, I just know someone is going to take a photo of me, like a prissy rich kid, and this poor uncle sitting on the floor be like, oh, it's kids won't give their seats to the elderly. I was like, no, this is social suicide. So I refused to sit down for the rest of the train ride. So I got to Mid Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, TAGCC, pretty standard convention. You know, there was cosplayers, lots of cosplayers. And this is a new uh, one, right? Yeah, it's new. It's their first year. Mm-hmm. Went to a bunch of events and stuff. I uh, met a bunch of streamers. Oh, that's they cool. were they were they were all walking around. And you know how you know how streamers have a stereotype about them, right? That they're all like painfully extroverted. Mm-hmm. Every time every time I think about this, I'm always like, eh, this can't be true. You know, like maybe I'm being too harsh. So I met one of my friends. Uh and I saw her there, I was like, oh, hey, you know, it's nice seeing you here. I haven't seen you in months. And immediately, out of nowhere, she pulls a fucking camera out, like, on her. Like, you know, on one of those, like, are they called monopods? It's like a short stick thing with a camera mounted on it. Yeah, yeah. I, think so. I think so. It's monopod. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I was like... I was like, oh my fucking god. And she immediately points it at me like, so what do you think about the event? I'm like, ah, pain. I'm not. Oh, no. so, so you basically got the gun to your head. Gun to your yeah. head? What is this event? Please explain. <laughs> Just like, no, no. <laughs> and then I had lunch at a maid cafe. So that happened. Oh, yeah. wait, is it a war here before the kid? <laughs> maid cafe. No, it wasn't. So it gets a B plus at best because no orcs or <laughs> oh, really? no orcs or space marines. But you know, as far as as far as non forty k mate cafes go, pretty okay. Attended a few panels. I, had, I was there for class. I had to take a bunch of photos for class. I was just like, uh, yeah. Can I just say, if you're listening to this right now and you're a guy who has taken creepy photos of a cosplayer, tolong uh, meninggal. Because because of you people, I was on guard the entire time to make sure my camera wasn't accidentally pointed at anyone. I had to like 
tilt my camera up 45 degrees at all times and like hold it. I had to treat it like a gun, essentially. Like I had to make sure that in no way am I brandishing this threateningly. Because <laughs> oh, I was I was like, again, I'm a guy who's going to a convention alone. So I'm like, it's very easy to take a photo of me that's going to make me look bad. So I'm just like, mm. and every time I see like a creepy looking dude with a camera, I'm just like, no, no, fuck you. You are the reason my arm is in pain right now. God. God. Wait, is the security that like thing? No, 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 the security is good. It's just like, it's a, it's an internal thing, you know? It's like being extra careful to not be sexist because everyone you know is super sexist kind of thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that was TAGCC, pretty substandard event. I have a standard event, not substandard. It was pretty okay. I might actually yeah. have a table there next year. Ah, that sounds awesome. But you know what's not awesome on the next topic here we have? Ooh. Mm, the experience with Fit Grand Order. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm setting up the new screen. Daniel, why you don't talk, uh, why would, why don't you talk about what is Fit Grand Order? Because I don't think a lot of people know about this, uh, outside of the, the anime circles. I particularly didn't know about it. And cut! So the, that was too spicy. The, the, the first recording was too spicy. We have yeah. we spoken too much about something that we should not be spoken of. Yeah, it's not my fault. Like, you know, Daniel just gets really into talking about Gilgamesh and he just started going at it. And then we got demonetized because Adpocalypse. And then suddenly Anan was playing with a dead body and we couldn't <laughs> use any of it. And I hope you know, Gilgamesh is for five stars, so we got Emmy. Like, come on now. Uh. And it all thanks to this thing, which is Fit Grand Order. So, <laughs> we had this conversation before, but you won't be hearing that. We are going to do another, much more toned down <laughs> discussion about this. So, Daniel, what's Fit Grand Order for those who don't know? Okay, uh, since I already said it before, that people can cut. Mm. It's basically, it's just a JPEG. Pictures of uh, uh, significant uh, historians like mm-hmm. uh, Jean the Arc, Key Arthur, but uh-huh. anime, anime B mice, I guess. So that means if you see Key Arthur, no, she's actually a girl. So, so the most important question is who is best girl? So basically, historical figures are all waifus, is what you are saying. Yes, yes. Ha huh. Alexander the Great, oh he's he's now a, a cute girl. Jack the Ripper, oh. the most uh, notorious killer. Oh yeah, she's he's a cute lolly girl. Jack the Ripper uh. is a lolly? Yeah. What? Now I want to download this. <laughs> Bila Bila we can get uh Hang Tua. I want Hang Tua has an anime girl. Uh Tadi Hang Tua tapi Iskandar. Huh. No, because here's what we need to do, right? We need Hang Tua as a Chinese anime girl just to really piss people off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I thought we want to tone down this conversation. <laughs> this was going, it was going back to the spicy moment. Whoa, whoa, tone down, tone down, tone down. Drop those game play cards down, please. <laughs> but see, see, see. Uh, it's, but the problem is, uh, Daniel, it's out in Southeast Asia, right? Yeah, it's out in Southeast Asia and Australia, but us in here in Malaysia. We don't get it. Which is, we yeah, we didn't get it. So, huh. as a nice journalist and that I am, I contacted them via email. And they gave me the most generic response. I was, uh, hi Daniel, sorry we cannot do this right now. But uh, we will come by, contact you later if we have any news that we are releasing to Malaysia. Thank you. Great Grand Order was supportive. Did you just reply by like, give me my waifu? <laughs> <laughs> well, my Jack the Ripper lolly girl. I just want my Jack the Ripper, come on. So now we know who best girl is. Uh, I'm, going to, Jack. I, I'm going to push Jack the Ripper lolly girl as best girl. <laughs> you know, oh, I, I gotta Google this. You, you guys keep talking while, while I Google. Oh no. 
this usually don't bode well. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, just like episode two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh that's best girl. That's best girl, all right. <laughs> okay, I I won't be showing it here, but you guys can also do your homework as well on Google. Uh, safe search off. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> That's why I say it doesn't bode well. So it's free Tapi to play, right? Cari, yeah. yeah, it's free to play, but have fun trying to get Jack Ripper because dear, uh, I remember, if I'm not mistaken, dear, uh, and Jean are their drop rate is around zero point one percent at least. Zero <sighs> point one. Yeah, like Jean during her lead time event, it was 0.08%. It's pronounced Jean, by the way. 0.08. Yeah. For what? Jean, what? Jean the Arc? Yeah. Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc. Ah, oh, yeah, that's funny. Ah. No, the best part, there's actually two versions of her, so have fun getting both. Oh, yeah, that was the whole thing, like, Jean Alta is, is the other one, right? Yeah, that one. What is this? Even you or you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you and you. <laughs> well, all of these four, all of these for JPEGs. Now oh, let's PNG. They they oh. scale better. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is credits due? <laughs> hmm. You if you get the five star version, it's a Taga file. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this kid. Completely people. uncompressed. I'm still reeling back in the realization that we are in a world where we are in a war for waifus. It's, it's a beautiful time to be alive. What a beautiful, beautiful time. And that leads nicely into our next topic. Wow. Right. You, you want your okay. Warhammer 40k corner? You have yes, your Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, 40K corner. corner. Warhammer 40k corner exists again because I don't know if you know about this, but the Warhammer 40k tabletop uh, has these like essentially patch notes called FAQs. I don't know how often they do. I don't know how often they do them, but like the devs of the game will be like will come out and be like, oh, you know, we're adjusting these rules every few months or so. And so my friend and I. Despite the fact that this is a tabletop army building game, we like we are not the best at building armies. Like instead of having like, oh, this is the sniper squad and this is the you know, this is the artillery support and this is the the vanguard or whatever, we tend to build two glass cannon beat sticks and charge them into each other. That is not the smartest like, move. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's um, <laughs> But it's cool. Ooh, it's totally cool. Yeah, they make the games really fast. Like, we're usually by turn three, like, you can already see who's the winner. Uh, so, we tend to play, like, smaller armies, but using, using like, lots of upgrades and stuff. So, after the new, the new, like, patch, I guess, the new FAQ, uh, G- GW was like, hey, stop doing that. <laughs> The so basically they're nerfing him. Oh yeah, they it is like downright personal. Like I feel personally attacked by by this FAQ. Like uh, the one thing is because my friend plays an army called Inari, and they're like the unified elves. Essentially, all the elf factions you can build an army combining all the elf factions as Inari, and the new rule they put out was like you can't do that anymore. You can't oh. combine elves and. You have to like there's these things called detachments. So each detachment can only be one faction of Inari. Uh, one faction of elf. And then they can have like one Inari leading each faction. Because there's only three pure Inari units. So basically your army is now limited to to that. And then for me, uh because I play Tau, and my favorite tactic, one of the best tactics to do is Tau is to load all your robots into a plane and have them jump out of the plane at the start of at the start of the match because then they can they can drop anywhere they want. Mm. Like it's essentially like you know in trading card games you have remove from play. It's like that. You you start the game with them removed from play and then they come in they come in during one of your turns. 
And so they, they put out a new rule saying that if you bring them into the game in turn one, they're not allowed to be anywhere. Like they have to be like in the starting area. Oh, so you can't do the, the, the rush now. Yeah, because that's how so I've been like it... screwing my friend over. <laughs> is it ruining the flow of the game with these uh, FAQs? Uh, well, they force people to come up with new ideas, I guess. But it does it does make it a little less fun for me. The thing is, uh, there's this stealth, there's this unit called the Stealth Battle Suit, which I have two squads of them on my desk right now. Ooh. They have this ability that, like, because the problem with the the jet rush idea is that you can you cannot be more than uh, less than nine inches away from an enemy unit. So the Stealth Battle Suit has this thing called a homing beacon where if you bring your units in via homing beacon instead of dropping them out of a plane and i mean technically they're still dropping out of a plane but it's a different kind of dropping out of a plane they negate that nine inch rule as long as they're within six inches of the beacon mm -hmm. so now i'm going to they, they add a bunch of buffs for the stealth battle suit so i am going to be using that as a way to to still rush my opponent Okay, so this may sound dumb, but how do you do that? Is it by like throwing items at the on the board, or is it like uh, is crazy pen and paper stuff? Ah, uh, kind of kind of pen and papery, a, li a little bit of both. It's like because I have the models of the stealth battle suit to like move to move around, and I'll just be like, yeah, they're using their homing beacon this turn, and then, and then I bring down all the other models. It's great. Yeah, I, because I imagine when you say the homing models like. Gumming up a piece of paper and throwing it at the board. Yeah, some, something like that, more, more or less. <laughs> but yeah, my favorite thing is uh, in the tower, because the other kind of updates you get are codexes. So every faction gets a codex and that will have like new rules and stuff. So it kind of keeps the game fresh because like last month, I think, Tower Empire got a new codex. So suddenly everyone's interested in Tower get for a while. So there was this one unit that was kind of meh before this. It was called the Commander in Cold Star Battle Suit. It had like it could move really far, but it couldn't customize its weapons like all the other battle suits. Mm -hmm. Then in the Tau Codex, they they changed it so they were like, oh, you can customize its weapons now. And there was like a weird wording wording with it because it has one unique weapon that it can't have, uh, that nothing else can have. And so it became really good. And in this FAQ, they had to nerf it again because it became too good. Mm. <laughs> Reducing like how much you can customize it. Wait, how, yeah. many times, uh, how many times uh, do they uh, release these FAQs? I can't remember because I don't like look out for them. I just, I know because the past two FAQs have screwed my friend over. So he just sends them to me whenever they come out. Like, I guess once every four months or so. Once every four months. Uh, imagine if it it did the Overwatch thing where it just every every week or so they will release a patch of like, hi there, we we're going to nerf this and this. Oh my god, that's how it feels for my friend because uh his faction the Inari, they have this ability called Strength from Death, because their whole mm. thing is that their law is that they're like reborn elves. They worship the god of death. Okay. And so. They have this ability where, like, when it first when they were first introduced, they had this ability where, anytime something dies around them, they like if something dies within six inches of an inari, it can immediately take another turn. Like even if it's your opponent's turn, it becomes their turn again. Yeah. And that was really broken. Surprise in a in a game that lasts five turns, letting someone take an extra turn is kind of broken. <laughs> so <laughs> they had to, they nerfed it so that, uh, they nerfed how you could, you don't take a full turn because each turn consists of moving, shooting, and fighting. So you take one of those, you take, you can either move, shoot, or fight. So they nerfed it so you can't do it during your opponent's turn and they nerfed it so something else. And it's just funny, like, my friends like, holy shit, like every update, Every update it gets nerfed again because it's still too good. So that's basically the Overwatch, uh, Overwatch thing, but 
in more in a longer time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can. So yeah, that's 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 forty k corner. Oh yeah, that the one more thing. They made it so you can't uh mass units anymore. Like they limited it to two of two of every unit in a 1,000 point game and three on a more than 1,000 point game. Uh, so, yeah. Unit cap, eh? Yeah, the... No rushing. <laughs> no rushing. No spamming, yeah, because because I like I like to spam. <laughs> spam, 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 spam. <sighs> yeah. But you know Tabletop what? Tabletop gaming is rough. It's rough, but you know what's not rough? This very good video game that is very, very, very polished. And people are raving about it. <laughs> Sometimes the same way just works on the fly. So let's move on to God of War. The game is out already. It's out on mm-hmm. April 20 for 20. And for though the, we've heard a lot of good vibes, good reviews, and even being described way way too boldly which i need to show you guys this this mm-hmm. good tweet now please read this good tweet by the amazing jeff kanata someone please what if zelda had an amazing cinematic story what if last of us had incredible skill-based combat what if Ch- uncharted somehow put all the violence in context what if dark souls was approachable and clear the answer to all these questions and more is God of War. What is she? He became a meme. <laughs> he be- this became a meme for one day. Mm-hmm. Good. So the thing is, because of, you know how well, when people got up, uh, uh, the game is released early on, and people are raving reviews very, very high, and uh, it gives a different perspective for us who like us, Game of Matters also, we do, didn't get to play early on. We only yeah, played after release. And yeah, we were, so we were <coughs> so we were basically in the dark. We don't know how is it really that good? Or is it the game is being made into uh what you say it is catered to what the reviewers uh, th- those sort of players uh, like. So when I, my first impression with all the scores, as you might know, is a lot of ten over the tens, a lot of ten over the tens, a lot, a lot of quotes saying game of the generation. Yeah, that that came out a lot. From for me especially, I found it. Oh, did they just make another Last of Us? And that bodes not so well for me, because what uh, I feel is. God of War is being turned into another game altogether. So, so mm-hmm. that's what I that was my impressions. Uh, after the reviews came out, I now I want to hear what what are the panel's impressions after those kinds of, uh, glowing reviews being out. I mean, here's the thing, right? About early game copies, um, because, like this. I had a friend who was complaining that that like famous Kingdom Hearts YouTubers are not getting access to Kingdom Hearts 3 early. And like, well, because they're very selective in who they give these kinds of things to. And yeah, so that's so like if if you're getting an early copy of one of Sony's biggest franchises, chances are you have a good relationship with Sony. And Sony probably doesn't have a good relationship with you if you're going to tell them something sucks. So that was that was like my my approach to any time someone said God of War is great. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? Or is the check from Sony great? Either or. Sony, by the way, we'd love a check. I'm just saying. Again, <laughs> we want the we we, we, we can. If they want to sponsor God of War podcast, we can do that totally. <laughs> hey, Anan, do you have any opinions about the the review? review? Uh, you're not a PS4 player, right? No, no, no. but uh, I I I can say that uh, the amount of hype in let's say in any game, whether franchise or new game, usually will really disappoint 
the 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 end players they don't like i remember that space 3 when it when it came out oh, so before, oh the greatest no. game of this generation i'm like what the hell are they talking about <laughs> the, 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 the same situation with God of War right now, like people are over raving, over hyping it, where it, it actually just like a continuation or a more mediocre version of the previous games. But, Ooh, uh, hot takes. Oh, hot takes, hot takes. And remember, we had a section being cut on this podcast. <laughs> Daniel, any thoughts before we move on? Uh. Um, I was like with none before I saw the game, uh, like the first few hours, because I also don't have a PS4, but thanks to the power of Let's Plays, I could watch it. And uh, yeah, it's actually very interesting. The fact that people are hyping it as well, but I still don't get the hype, even though the game looks good, you know, visually, gameplay-wise and the story, but yeah. I don't understand the hype. And yeah, I don't I'm, I don't understand why it's a why it's a God of War game. Like I feel like it would have made a great like new IP. Yeah, no, pretty much. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the, 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 the hype. Like this this is like all IP with God knows how many improvements we don't know. Like I would have called it like All Father or something and then like you know, have keep the Viking theme. Call it All Father, have you have you be like Secretly, Odin hiding as a human and have a human son. That'd be pretty fucking cool. Just saying. Oh, uh, you guys! It's a good uh, thing. Yeah. It's a good thing that we didn't got our guest today because uh, allegedly we have a we have a guest for this episode. Unfortunately, he's not feeling well, so we wish all the best to him on recovery. Yeah, soon. He is the allegedly. The first Malay to come to Platinum God of War. <laughs> Allegedly, the first Malay to Platinum God of War. So, either, either you get it or you don't get it. So basically, uh, I actually played God of War. I have only managed to get my hands on it. And, yo, this is good, man. This is good. And I have to tell you why. Because... I I also uh, on the same boat as you guys. Pretty skeptic, uh, as I said before, right? Uh, it looks like more like a, a it 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 changes the God of War me- mechanics too much, and it feels like more like a God uh, like a The Last of Us kind of game, which is mm. is not to say that's bad, but it feels too safe. But it mm. isn't. It isn't. So let. Yeah. So first thing first, remember that uh in the previous episode we talked about how this is the quote unquote dark souls of God of War, right? In terms of the dark souls of In terms of in terms of how they, they change the control scheme to make it more methodical and stuff like that. Huh? And mm. I in my coverage on gamermatters.com, I written it off as no, this is not a character action game. I was wrong, man, I was wrong. This is a character action game. And for those who are on the video, I've played. Uh, for those who are listening to the audio, the video feed is right now. Uh, we are playing the God of War Advanced Combat Strategies video from the PlayStation 4 YouTube channel, which displays Kratos in action. Our our mad dad, our very old grizzly dad, who apparently used to kill a lot of uh, what was it? Greek gods. Yeah, and, Greek gods. And now it's going to the Norse. Uh, Norse mythological world for some reason. But you know, you know just to kind of point out when God of War three ended, you know, there were so many like comics that made jokes like, "Oh, what's next? Is Kratos gonna fight Norse gods?" Or you... Like, I hate that this it actually happened. I hate that. I hate that ten years later it actually happened. Oops. Okay, <laughs> okay but back okay. to the combat. If you can see here. The the combat, even though you play, you know, you use you use R one and R two for light and heavy attacks, it still feels like a character action game. Uh, one thing, there's no stamina bar, so it's not so spawn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then two, you can do animation cancels really quick. So basically, if you're in a combo like light, light, and then you need to roll, you can just roll immediately. Oh. 
it's pretty much character action in that point. Even though your move sets are pretty much similar to Souls, you have L1 to block. You can pull out a shield. You can see there. Uh, but it's not just a, just a L1 to shield. If you time it correctly, it's a parry. It's a character action game style of parry. Time it right, parry, mm-hmm. and you can start the combo there. Damn, yeah, I'm looking at this. This is, this is pretty pretty good. It's good. And then another thing, there's launchers. You can do air juggles. So light light into a heavy. You can uh uh you can put the enemies off the uh, off the ground. And then you can uh-huh. still continue the combo combo by the air juggling. Or you can integrate the uh throwing the axe because you can throw the axe that Kratos have. So basically you can light light into a launcher and then you throw the axe and if you do a heavy throw, it will freeze that enemy. So it freezes and drops down and then you have your bare hands which you also can do combos with and then you can call back the axe using triangle and when that axe calls back, it will hit anything that is on its way. So basically if you are in a crowd, you can just throw the axe afar and then just call it back for a boomerang attack. Damn. It's Ooh, in there. It is actually pretty good. It, it doesn't convey well when you just watch videos. It is uh, because... Uh, um, it must uh, feel great, yeah. It feels yeah, man, how awesome. Far, uh, hmm? okay, uh, how far are you in the game? Because I'm watching Let's Play the She's... Okay, okay, okay. Around, I played uh, it, five it? hours. I, uh, let's just uh, say I also five hours. Just beaten the... So let me see, I've beaten the first two bosses, right? Yes. And, okay, that, so next point is, the you know what, how I feel, uh, like, I think a lot of us uh, have feel about the game going a bit too much with the Last of Us kind of formula. I can safely say they didn't go too far. They still remember that gameplay is still king. So, back to the news point. There is a boys fight. I won't say what boys fight. That... But when you see it, you will clap. That is what all I want to say. You when you see it, you will clap because that is freaking good. So yeah, bas- true. True. basically, <laughs> without spoiling anything, you know how uh, back in the E3 trailer when some uh, when it's all cinematic and stuff, and suddenly poop, the heart comes out. Oh, this is gameplay. It's yep, su- yep. It's, it, it may sound like a bit facetious or just to show, oh, this is actually gameplay. But they actually, uh, how you say, they actually made it worth it. Uh, it, make, it adds to the experience. Because just by using those hard icons alone, they, make, they made that one particular boss fight even more grossing. You know? Oh. Like, it, it adds to the moment. Oh, you are low health. Oh, the health drops down. That's oh. great. Mm. Oh, you're almost done with the boss? Oh, the have rise up. While still, oh. while still, the, the the moment is actually a cinematic moment where it's just oh, uh, he just uh that that boss just struggled so and then suddenly the health that you saw you were trickling uh, trickling down slowly, 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 boop, rises up, which is actually a pretty good moment because it it integrates well with the gameplay and and, and the story. One more scene before before I stop. Uh, remember the, the 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 moment in the E3 trailer again where Kratos go, don't be, uh, don't be sorry, be better. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. That that scene. Uh, before that is actually his son Atreus tries to aim for a deer with his bow, but misses, and then he goes all uh. mad. Oh, oh, you only shoot. No, no, he said only fire. Only fire! Stops, comes down. Only fire. When I say so. It's something like that lah. I'm paraphrasing. So, <laughs> so at that moment, you, uh, and a few moments later, you will realize that, oh, you can instruct Atreus to fire the bow when you want. Ooh, it's basically introducing it's basically introducing a gameplay mechanic through cinematic story, which is actually mind blowing when I look back on it. Which, is, ha, huh, that's pretty clever, and it didn't spell it out too much, just enough. Hmm. Hmm. That's really so cool. That's why, 
<laughs> so that's where the, most of the memes where plus x to boy came from. Plus square to boy, and no, actually, that, that you know, you know, uh, you know how plus x to Jason was supposed to be a very, very what you say, emotional moment. But because you can hammer x or so much, it becomes comical. And plus, the delivery of the lines are terrible, right? Mm-hmm. God of War did that kind of moment, but better. But better. I I I couldn't imagine that I'm going to rave about a cinematic story being, uh, being told, be, and it is good, and it has gameplay mechanics integrated. Nice. Hmm. Mm. Okay, so far, what are the other points of contention we have so far? I'm going to convert you guys to big God of War fans. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I want a good God of War. I'm just, I'm glad that this is a good God of War game. That's, I'm probably pick it up like at the end of the year because I still want to get Battle Tech. And oh, totally. Once I've done one, you can, you can give my copy a go because I want you to play this, and I can assure you guys, this game will be in our game of the year discussions. It's, uh... it's pretty good. No, I, maybe not a 10, maybe not a 10 on my book, but it is at least a 9. That's, ah, that... so that's, a, that's an interesting thing then. What yeah. are the flaws with this game then? Okay, one thing, you know about the over-the-shoulder uh, camera that you guys are yeah. seeing, right? Yeah, at at my point, uh, as far as I've played, i found problems because... The, the enemies here are not like the kind of Arkham games where they come in one by one. Even though they, they surround you, they only come one by one. You can slowly counter them again. You have that kind of rhythm there. No, this, this uh, in God of War, you can totally get gangbang if you are not careful. Even worse, <laughs> you can get gangbang without looking. It can, the, you can get uh, them to totally swarm you from behind. And all you can see is... Those proximity arrows, the ones, the the Forza Motorsport mm. proximity arrows, which <laughs> which may or may not be a good solution to that. There's also a quick turn button actually, that similar to RE4, mm. which sort of solves the problem. And later on in the game, you have like abilities like uh that affects the area, area effect abilities. So that sort of mitigates some of the problems. But for me, I still think that. Maybe if the over the shoulder camera can go just a bit more further, then oh, just like just like Cesaro, I can block and seek it. Ah, because you because the problem is when you play a character action game, you you want to know when exactly the enemy starts the animation, right? You have hmm. the proximity arrows, but even the flashing light is not enough information for me to convey. What is supposed to be. So I still find it. Sometimes I want to. Oh, I time it right. I dodge this way. Oh no, the enemy. Yeah, I totally time it right. But I went. I dodged the wrong way, and instead I got hit. It's not a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's always that's always the case. I love I love this animation of him like pulling back the axe. Like it looks so cool. It feels so solid, especially with the vibration and stuff, right? And it curves. Mm. That it that it isn't uh isn't thrown in a straight line. If you throw can it, you, huh? no, can you like move while calling back the axe to like yes. Him? Oh that's yes, great. and the the there's a lot of good uh even though the arenas like uh like you see in the gameplay video here is like oh we just have like this one location. Some of the time. The environment mm. plays uh, a role. Sometimes they have fire in there. Sometimes they have spike strips. Sometimes there's a big hole there, and that affects the gameplay as well. You can do. Uh, this. Speaking, of, speaking of big hole, uh, is there a sex mini game in this God of War? From Does what? your son watch you fuck a fuck a random lady? No. If there is, it would be awkward. <laughs> no. So first five hours not there. No, no sex mini game. So far, no. I don't think so. But okay, that... we'll we'll keep this uh keep this in mind for future like next next episode we'll have follow up and see if you if you found the sex mini game or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also on one of the small details, uh, if you can see at the back of Kratos, right, you mm-hmm. where he hangs the axe, 
Yeah. There mm-hmm. is actually something that helps hang the axe. So it's not just floating weapon on the back. Like in in like in normal games, right? You can say, yeah. oh, there's a big break sword, and how does it connect to the body? Yeah, just hangs back. No, there's that one small metal chain shaped like the Omega logo of the previous God of War games. Oh, it's a really good small touch. I really appreciate that. They thought of everything. They really did. They really did. Yeah. So before before we go into news, mm-hmm. uh, I'd like to to show you guys some art. I have put some I put some art in the Discord chat. This is a piece of installation art that teaches you about the fragility of life. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, we, let we me transition. Put it up on the... uh... So I'll I'll explain the story. So many months ago, I dropped my phone, and there was a tiny little crack that ran along my phone screen. Then a few months later, uh, like a true supervillain, I crushed my phone in my hand. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, long story, but basically I was not having the best of days. And because that's oh, always been a thing I do, like whenever I'm really annoyed, I just press my thumbs down really hard on something. Yeah, and so crushed today, it was, today it was uh, my phone. And then like now, many months later, pieces of glass from the top of my phone have started coming off. Yikes. Like I don't have a screen protector anymore because it like pushed off the screen protector. Yeah, you'll see it there. That's also shout out to my sweet wallpaper. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, now like there's a giant gaping hole in my phone and it's hilarious. <laughs> Yikes. I am every Apple fan's worst nightmare with my busted up iPhone. But it's a it's a weirdly freeing thing because I don't have a phone case anymore and I don't have a screen protector either. Because once your phone is this badly smashed up, you're like, you think anyone will notice a scratch? I don't think they'll notice a scratch. Ooh. Yeah. And before we move on to the news, that was a. I need to remind people that this is a thing. The Four Fingers promotion of God of War in Malaysia and Singapore. Wow. Oh boy. Oh yo. Good God. Yeah, I love capitalism. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen capitalism in the video game sense of things in Malaysia this big. Especially with God of War. We have a big billboard at Mid Valley. And now we have a promotion where we can eat chicken wings to go to E3. <sighs> <laughs> Every time I read this news, I'll laugh at it. It's so ridiculous. And yet, it's real. And yet, it's real. And they beat Arby's to it. They post something first before Arby's. Imagine oh, that. Yeah. I, I when I try, I reported on this. Uh, reported on this story. I was looking at Arby's and have they posted anything about God of War yet? No, not yet. Recently they have. So oh. four fingers, good job. You are now the Arby's of Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. That's God of War. You can. Now you know the hype, and no, it is not way too pretentious. It's actually a good game, and if you are still not that kind of gamer who plays this kind of game, at least you get appreciate that they have put a lot of effort. And as people say, this is probably have pushed the the boundaries, the benchmark of a good game, to radical new heights. Uh, can, can oh yeah. Oh, Anan. Yes, yeah. go. So they have billboard in Mid Valley, is it? Yep. So uh, like, I'm thinking uh, that we are now in uh, uh, election mode, so the conservatives are not uh, complaining about oh god of something. This is blasphemous. Take it down. Oh god! Oh, oh, I didn't consider that. Wow! Panas, panas. I thought oh, we were to. I thought you want to keep it less spicy. I want, you know, you know, I want, I want. Uh, we we don't go into that that world that 
rabbit hole, okay? We, we are not going there. <laughs> now, that's way too radical for us to go. Let's tone down and go into a pretty... While the name is radical, it's pretty, pretty shoggy. <laughs> Oh, a radical God. new uh, radical heights is the new game by Law Vegas developers, Bosky Productions. So another battle royale. Another battle royale. Any thoughts? It's interesting at least. There's bicycles. Is there cars? Did you? That's all, that's all it has. Can. Yeah. It's the it thing. Has- huh. Because uh, I've seen the gameplay from uh, YouTube, and I was like, it's just you know your normal battle arena game, but it's all it's just bikes and the ATM machine. The a- yeah, the, that is an interesting one. They so basically they copied from two games, uh, the usual battle royale stuff, and uh, it's an old game which actually stopped development early early this year. The curling. Oh, the curling. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip the curling. <laughs> yeah, the curling. Which are, because there's one part where in the curling where you can buy items so that you can use it. Yeah, they also rip that up. Oh, I thought this is original, so they copied from there. <laughs> <laughs> the curling as well. Uh, 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 Bosky, Bosky. Is it Korean based company, right? Or is it US? US. The Korean stuff is because the yeah, Lawbreakers was uh, published by Nexon, a South Korean company. We'll get to them later. They <laughs> are <laughs> the <laughs> Korean now. <laughs> so basically, yeah, uh, Radical Heights is in quote-unquote extreme early access. And they mean that really literally because the map itself, uh, there's a lot of uh, what you say, locations and buildings where the assets are not created. Uh, where you can just see those, uh, you say, the line lines. They don't have any textures. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to say. It's that sort of early. It's like PUBG's uh, new map, but rougher. I thought you were going to say it's like PUBG. Because, you know, PUBG still looks really rough. Just saying. Yeah, PUBG in general is rough, but, but still, <laughs> this is rougher. You know that the, the bicycle thing, right? You can ride the bicycle and you can do a drive-by. But last I saw it, <laughs> but last I saw it, there's no animations of the drive-bys. So basically, you're just pointing the cursor around the uh, around the bike and suddenly sh- uh, guns shoot, uh, they, you can hear guns shooting up. You can't see the guns, you can't see animations about the said guns being aimed or shoot, it's just sound like oh a bullet appear from the bike, bullet from hell. What if, what if it's not you doing the shoot? What if it's your stand? You have a stand that, that is shooting, <laughs> and that's why you can't see it because you're not a stand user. Is this oh. a JoJo reference? <laughs> oh yo, this it. Go 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 go, go 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 Yeah man, when you crash two and two bikes into each other, like, oh, <laughs> shit. Nice. You know, <laughs> mullets and stands. What an interesting combo. I think that would work. I mean, that is JoJo. That is literally JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and stands. That is... There you go. That is actually part 3, I think. So... Because <laughs> part 3 is about 80s. Uh-huh. So, Bosky, if you want stuff, if you want Radical Heights, if you want Radical Heights to be that radical, put a JoJo reference. There you go. Free of charge. <laughs> People will come if you just do that. Mm-hmm. Both as in they'll play the game and they'll actually come. They'll do <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> once you add Jojo into the game. Reset the clock. We have one dirty joke. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally, it's yeah, a bit yeah. a long while. Even though the podcast has been spicy, we have... And uh, uh, what you say... It's not natural for us to avoid dirty jokes this late into the podcast. But there you go. Reset the clock. Oh, we had one dirty joke in the podcast. Remember I said something about uh about Anan like touching himself to Jack the Ripper or something like that? Like during the <laughs> fake go talk. Uh, <laughs> reset the clock again. <laughs> so, Battle Royale, it's a thing. 
So what about PUBG? Is it still a thing? Ah, uh, now we yeah. our new weekly segment. Fuck PUBG, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh god. I don't know what so, to put this. So for those what? of you, Go. Uh, yeah, for those of you who are like, you're first off, you're probably a streamer if you've never heard of this, because if there's one thing the PUBG devs love, it's their streamers. Remember when they made stream sniping illegal in PUBG? Mm-hmm. I do. They they did that because streamers were upset because it turns out if you broadcast your game and someone watches that game to kill you, the game stops being very fun. So they were like, stream sniping is a bannable offense. So it was quite a long time ago. <laughs> and then Fortnite Battle Royale comes out and the PUBG devs lose their shit because... Because they stole our idea. They stole the Battle Royale from us. <laughs> they, they mentioned that they were considering legal action for this. And the, after PUBG... The fact that they are using Unreal Engine, which is made by Epic Games, who made Fortnite, it's, it's not a really <laughs> wise really... idea, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a revocable license. You can just say, hey... You have three months to make your to make a new engine because you don't you don't have the rights to Unreal anymore. That's why you make PUBG Unity. Yeah, yeah. On one point, I can feel for the PUBG guys because hey, we are the engine providers. Oh, you're making a good game. Wow, why not we make a competitor for your game? Screw you guys. So I can see from That's... that point. But the way they handled it is totally garbage. So I'm back with Epic being good now. Like, here, here, that's not even the latest fuck PUBG news. Yeah, we just so, recalling the previous episodes. Now, now. Yeah, so in the latest news, they've started legal action against these Chinese PUBG clones. Knives like, out. Mobile Battle Royale clones. Survival. Yeah, yeah, those games. And the so, of the pen. <laughs> yeah, so they have to like pro- prove that the idea they're being ripped off, and they're like, oh, you know, we've. The frying pan is iconic to PUBG. Shipping containers, three-story buildings. I'm like, first off, you know what's really funny about this? Is that the the assets in the game aren't even from PUBG. Apparently, they're all store-bought Unity, uh, not Unity, uh, Unreal. 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 Uh, yeah, Unreal store assets. They didn't even make the thing, and they're like, oh, someone's stealing it from us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know how there's all that talk. There's all those E3 rumors that there's gonna be a bunch of battle royale games at E3. Yeah. Uh-huh. I here's my secret hope is that it's true, and then we can write an article saying that this year at E3 there were a lot of Fortnite clones. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good title. Good God. <laughs> Just watch them open up like Google or whatever. Be like, oh. <laughs> uh, and you know what recently they also talk about oh we want to do esports properly no esports in PUBG is already a thing like from the community grassroots uh, route yeah grassroots yeah, no, right. we, need we need teams we need sponsors we need <laughs> apparently PUBG got beaten to the punch with that as well because H1Z1 is already launching its pro league with 15 established esports organizations all on board and they are playing it tomorrow. <laughs> broadcasted live on Facebook. Why? Is <laughs> it still a thing? It is still a thing apparently. But it's more funner than PUBG if I've seen. <laughs> now, I, I mean in terms of the roughness and stuff like that, in terms of the game itself, it sounds terrible at the moment and the, the numbers are not so good. But to the thing that they manage to actually convince these esports organizations and actually run a proper esports league similar to Overwatch League where they have contracts, uh, pay sharing, stuff like that, all already on set. It's pretty Wait, crazy, it's, man. Yeah. Isn't a play unknown is a former dev for H1Z1? Yes, he yeah, was consulted. Yeah, but is part of H1Z1. Ah, so basically, he, he also stole the idea as well. Inspired by 
I would play any game if I knew it pissed off the PUBG devs. <laughs> like, fuck it. I would play H1Z1. I'd play fuck just to piss <laughs> off the, the PUBG devs. Uh, okay, I've, I've like an opinion to say that it's, it's quite long. Okay, so mm-hmm. this is about esports in general. Okay, okay. If a game, uh, okay, so in games we have like different mechanics, right? Okay, we have shooting and stuff. So and that's the element of RNG, so element of random random stuff in games. So mm-hmm. let's say item or maybe, uh, let's say chance for abilities to prop or something. So to make an, a good esports, you have to reduce the RNG or at least the controllable RNG. So like Hearthstone, we have we still have RNG, right? Uh, with the let's say card uh, output or something, but it's controllable. Yeah. So you you pick your deck, uh, you build your deck uh, with the amount of RNG that you want. So risk and reward. Okay, I I have this much card that is that, that will give me high reward if the RNG is, uh, if I have luck with the random number. Okay, so mm-hmm. uh, that that is good. Okay, uh, controllable RNG. So in battle royale, I don't think it will make a good uh, esports because of the high, high number of uh, high high percentage of random. I say in terms of random item positioning and stuff. So it won't make a good spectator sports. Mm. Ah, but I have a counterpoint for you here. Okay, it's banking on the other part of esports, which is tribalism. Oh yeah, and you, s- you you get to watch your favorite PUBGer. I don't know, like yeah, just. And watch him have to fight ninety nine bad guys and hope that he comes out on top and then rage when he gets killed by I don't I don't know what kills you randomly in PUBG. Uh, Sniper shot. Yeah, and, and then you can go to Reddit and be like, oh, this is so unfair. Yeah, tribalism, tribalism over mechanics. That's how esports works. Yeah, but uh, just make a, a short term fun or something because. At the end of the the watch time, if you're going to be burned out, like oh this like random stuff and shit, rather than oh this is skill and stuff or oh, teamwork, like oh, watch this or we we have okay this outplay by this outplay by this, rather than oh the oh he got the uh, sniper rifle uh, from spawn that's why he he can win. So it's not really a show of skill. So rather taking the opportunity and having the luck of it, maybe you the try- first guys PUBG no skill. <laughs> it's a amount of skill, but it really depends on the. Fortnite random. is the only true esport. <laughs> <sighs> Keep on getting spicy. <laughs> but yeah, that, those oh, are yeah, legit concerns, lah. I I share the same uh, same opinions in terms of uh, battle royale and esports, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see where yeah. they can. Yeah, let Let's see yeah. where it goes. Yeah. And speaking of t- uh, seeing things where it goes, Anand, I need to know where is Ryzen going now that it is having, uh, no, it is already launched the second generation of the Ryzen CPUs. Uh, Ryzen is the Anand Tech Corner. Yeah. 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 So Ryzen 2 is out, so it's basically a refresh or half step in Intel, Intel speak or something, half step. So they, uh, miniaturize the transistor bit so before this it's 14 nanometer in node size so now it's 12 nanometer so with the with the shrinking of the transistor size we uh it reduces the power use as, as efficiency increase the efficiency uh, and by that it will increase the clock speed right so high effic- high efficiency you can have more headroom to increase the clock speed and less performance so uh right now i'm Reading like rave reviews, so pretty good reviews in ter- uh in terms of present to performance. So if you still haven't uh bought or haven't got into the AMD ecosystem uh, with Ryzen, now is a good time to start uh buying Ryzen stuff because it's a more optimized Ryzen rather than the first gen. But yeah, but I don't know whether. It's cost effective. I mean, it's cost effective in terms of the performance, uh, price to performance ratio. But in terms of the use case, will you be using like eight cores for gaming? I, I don't think so. I think like the the Horizon is still good enough if you can find it cheap, rather than buying new ones. That's all. 
Uh, but uh, we just wait for the Zen to architecture because now it's like the optimization rather than a new architecture. So wait for Zen to architecture uh, for a more exciting news rather than Ryzen 2. That's all. In terms of the pricing, Anna, have you looked at the prices? Wait, uh, I think it's somewhat the same. Still the same? same. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the, like uh, the Ryzen 2700 is like 330 something. More or less the same, so okay. it's fine. Because from the from our reports here, the Ryzen five two six hundred, the the lowest one is around eight hundred and ninety nine ringgit. How's that sounds? Six core twelve threads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's re very reasonable. Uh, when considering like the Intel six core few few years back, yeah, you got six core is for the enthusiast platform, so at least. 1800 ringgit so 800 ringgit for uh six core uh cpu which is very comparable to the intel six core with 800 ringgit that that's bargain stuff right oh it has been beaten right now in terms of the price performance amd is back amd is back <laughs> oh. yeah 800 I... is reasonable that's all like, yeah pretty I, much I, I remember uh, like 2014, 2015, if you want to buy an i7 uh, 4770K, the overclock one, it's four core, four thread. So it, it will cost you like a thousand hundred something. That's for four core or something. So now we have six core, two threads for 800. That's a very reasonable price. Very good. So even though there's this, uh, what is called called, uh, well, marketing, marketing uh where well, this technological uh my cryptocurrency thing the prices of uh this uh you know cores are not really affecting that much huh? no no, In fact, no, no. It's, it's basically much cheaper than before uh, uh, uh yeah it's like, uh uh yeah yeah that's basically uh, yeah uh, as, mm. as we're getting over the years we are getting more efficient more effective manufacturing so can expect better stuff next year next two years Yes, uh. but, if only uh, the, lah, tapi if only the the graphic cards could uh, what, come down in prices, that would be just perfect. Yeah, and in terms of the transistor size, so now we have twelve nanometer. So Intel is working on their ten nanometer or seven nanometer. We are closer to the let's say Moore's limit. So we have Moore's law and Moore's limit. Uh, I'd say the limit for the smallest transistor size. Uh, for like let's say car design is around five nanometer or something going any further will we will have problem with uh quantum mechanics in terms of the the, the electron in the transistor itself will teleport to others to other place this quantum mechanics or uh, uh, another whole rabbit hole oh so, yes I didn't... wait do we have quantum graphics cards is that what i hear what i heard you say no 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 uh so the transistor the transistor in the circuits right so in the chips with transistor so mm -hmm. the smallest right now, uh, we, we are in 12 nanometer, 14 nanometer. Uh, so we have research in 7 nanometers, 14, 10. So uh, the, uh, the the projected smallest size of transistor that, that we may possibly do with our current technology is 5 nanometer. If we mm -hmm. go smaller than 5, we're going to have problem with quantum mechanics. Well, quantum mechanics is again us. Uh... Because the electrons will do things start uh it is called quantum tunneling so the the particle itself will teleport to another place other than being at the at, lo at the locality i see so then you can play a game so well that your graphics card teleports away I'm glad. I'm glad all of those uh, uh, innovation talk of technology goes into that kind of conclusion. Because hmm? I had does that does that mean if we you can make a special graphics card with transistors so small that you can make your waifu real? Yes. <sighs> Jack the Reaper, I'll Probably. come for you. 
<laughs> if Jack <laughs> Ripley is in our thumbnail for this episode, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing with our lives anymore. I don't know because Carter is not here anymore in the discussion. It's all about Jack the Ripper, baby. Yeah, and freaking God of War. We forgot about that like half an hour ago. Jack the Ripper is still relevant. <laughs> still relevant. Yeah, <laughs> relevant. And talking about relevancy, cars. Cars are uh, probably will be relevant. Not too. It won't be as relevant, but the innovation here is getting there. Where we now have a car that is now available in a game and also available on the road, announced together. So this is so this is basically the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo. So it's a car by Audi. That was designed actually first for Gran Turismo, the game, the racing game. So basically, the Gran Turismo has a lot of clout that they are now at the point that where they can go knock onto the manufacturer's doors and say, "Hey, hey man, want to design a car for us?" Ah, uh? oh sure, sure, sure. And then a uh, few months, a few years later, boom, new car, new concept car, <laughs> probably. And Audi actually went. A bit further because this is not just a concept car. They actually made it real. This car is in real life. Mm, yeah. So basically, it's a it's a shell of a car of the car from Gran Turismo, but with an electric motor from uh, an existing car, which is from uh, if you guys don't know, it's from a uh, Formula E. The engine is from Formula E, and they just basically shell engine put it in. Okay, here's your car. Uh, and that's why Formula E is cross promoting it. That, and that's why mm. Formula E is now popular because basically, because is the new tech like uh, we are going to go off video games for a while. Uh, Formula E engine is using electric, and you know since electric is the future, etc. etc. I already had a great idea of just designing a car that harks back into the past because. Uh, as they said in, I think, a draft trap article, Matt, mm-hmm, that? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, that, it was a, it's a throwback tribute to an old car, right? It was a, the car race in IMSA at the back, at back in the 90s. It was an Audi something something GTO. I forgot about the model. But the, the, the livery and the wheel design is very reminiscent of that particular car. Mm-hmm. And that's why, and then they look into the future by basically using hybrid engine, which is what is the Formula E car is running on, with battery powered, uh, behemoth that is the engine, which in game you can hear the noise there. Well, you know how the in game car is. At first, uh, you you know that uh, electric cars they have instant talk. So basically, you go zero to sixty really quick. It's like just a foot pedal press, and boom, you go there. But without the sound, you just like. Yeah, it's just. It's like ee. Ah. <laughs> That's the Formula E sound. Yeah. E- Formula, e- Formula, e- e- Formula E. Formula E. <laughs> Formula E. Ready to the game. Yeah, and even in game it's, it handles pretty uh, pretty killer. But at first I thought, eh, how come the the talk is so slow? I forgot it has TC uh, traction control on. Formula E cars don't have traction control, so I turn it off and uh, whoa, that power man, that is too. Wait, powerful. you can turn it off in the game as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm. So basically, so this is like the there are two cars actually. Uh, they. That was added in the game. This the electric one, the Audi e-tron, and also one car. Uh, the Audi, yeah, just Audi. Audi Vision Gran Turismo is basically a hybrid version of the car. In, in it is used for the in-game races lah. It, it has more uses inside the game. So these mm-hmm. are the fifty-first and fifty-second car cars that have been added in, in Gran Turismo Sport after launch. Hmm. Hmm. How long has this, the game been out again? Uh, it's out on October. Uh, oh, late October. Five months. Yeah, and, it's only five months. And, six months. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, six months. Yeah. And they made a promise back in November that they will be adding around 50 cars by March. And each month, by the end of each month, you get an update that adds a lot of cars. 
and now the total is now 50 and this is the extra like 52 by last month it's already they already reached the target of 50 Hashtag Janji di tepati. Oh, yes. <laughs> and yes, because if you know Polyphony Digital, these developers, they have a lot of history of delay, 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 delays. To the point that you cannot expect them to actually like give something on the date. And mm-hmm. they've proven that's wrong. It's amazing to see that. It's good. I love it when devs like do their shit. Yeah. <laughs> and... Speaking of developers that do that shit, most of it is being added content, huh? Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we we must talk about this Monster Hunter content. Okay, go. While well, I'm going offline for a bit, you guys talk. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you guys a story. Ooh, uh, time. Yeah, so... My friend and I, we play Monster Hunter, like, very regularly. Like, we're just farming, farming, like, items and stuff in Monster Hunter. And so we're playing, you know, our usual run. We're talking about shit. Not not unlike this podcast. Just talking about <laughs> random shit. And then, uh, my friend suddenly sends me a link. And he says, like, react to this as soon as you're done with this hunt. And I was like, okay. Hunt finishes. We open it as, like, Trailer for new mon- for next Monster Hunter content update drops. I was like, okay. And then I checked the I checked the thing. It's like, oh, we're adding a new quest type. It's called the Siege of Kulva Taroth. And it shows this gold weapon and they're saying like, oh, we're adding new new like layered armor. So it's like skins. So you know you wear it over your armor in case your armor's hideous. Okay. And uh, we're adding like new relic weapons and i was like holy shit this all sounds amazing i can't believe like when when's this shit gonna come out like i'm so excited it's gonna be like a painful few weeks waiting for this update and then it's like oh no the update drops this weekend <laughs> it's like no two days. days they were just like they were just like yeah it drops on the 19th and it, i was watching this on the 17th i'm like holy shit this is amazing <laughs> So we got a new update. Uh, it's a raid, essentially, is what it is. Because Monster Hunter has 16, 16 man servers, like instances. And you mm-hmm. can all meet up in this place called the Gathering Hall. So you all go up to the hall. All 16 players can hang out in the Gathering Hall. And what you do is that uh, you're all hunting the same Kulvert Arof, but you can only do like four people per hunt. So every time you jump in, like the Kulvataroth has a pursuit level. And the higher your pursuit level, like the more like the more intense the fight is, essentially. So mm-hmm. everyone is raising the Kulvataroth's like pursuit level together. Like everyone has the same pursuit level. And it's really cool because like during the thing, you get notifications on what other players are doing. Because you have to break parts of Kulvataroth's body to get more pursuit points. So it's like, you'll get notification like, oh, the other team has broken its chest. The other team has broken its tail. This team has broken its claws. Like, holy shit, this is this is the coolest thing I've ever seen Monster Hunter do. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Let me, hold on, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that they made basically like a mini battle royale team? No, no, no. For playing not not a battle royale. It's it's a raid essentially. Ah, it's like you don't see the other players breaking other parts of the thing, but it's it's like in their game they've broken its horns, so that's worth sixty points, and so sixty points are added to the pro- pursuit level. That kind of thing. Oh, so it's like a massive raid, but it's like individual instances. Yeah, if you've played Warframe, think of the Baylor from Orion. It's like that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the formal, yeah, yeah. I, I got it, I got it, yeah. Yeah, that was literally like, the first thing I said. Was, collective rate, something, yeah. Got it. The, the, first, the first thing I thought of, when it, I was like, so Monster Hunter is getting a bailer for Mori, and my friend was like, oh, it is, it's a bailer for Mori, and except we don't have to do going shit. But yeah, it's a limited time event, sadly. I think it's like two weeks. Oh, limited time only, okay. They said it'll oh. be coming back soon. But 
yeah i assume it's going to be like every few months or so they're going to be like hey cool Vataroff is back because they to keep people playing they added kind of rng weapons so basically when you when you complete the siege of cool Vataroff, you can claim rewards and you get these things called relic weapons and relic weapons have randomized elements and stats they're oh. randomized they're not entirely randomized like it's you can either get one that's 150 damage or one that's 200 damage or one that's 300 damage isn't it's like that and the weapon models are all gold and i wish i had taken a photo of mine so we could put it on screen but mine is essentially hari raya colors because it's like it's all gold and then there's a green core in the middle and there's like lots of floral patterning man you should put a guy play card on it <laughs> I mean, he has a Predator logo. <laughs> Every time, like I look at my weapon now, uh, I spam my my PS4 party chat. Is da 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 you cannot, I don't recommend doing the monster solo because its uh, its health is adjusted for four players even if you're playing it single player. Oh. It, so it has a shit ton of health. But like, as long as you're in an instance where people give a shit about the siege, then you you will find people to play with no matter what because everyone's like trying to get to the, trying to get those sweet random items. So yeah. It's it's really funny though, because like every time you finish the siege, like when you reset Kovataroff back to pursuit level zero, nobody wants to play because no, because that is the most boring one. That's where like everything is really slow and you just kind of follow it around and you're not going to kill it. You know, you won't be able to kill it on time. But yeah, siege of Kovataroff is a great update. Like it's hands down the best update Monster Hunter has done. And I am glad that they that they did it. I'm glad that to see monsters as well going into this model where all the updates are free, right? Yep, 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 yep. And well, not like there's there are paid content, but it's like emotes and stuff, and not there's, there's... and not loot boxes, right? Yeah, like there's an idol dance emote that I really want to get. Uh, <laughs> I just need to figure out which one it is. And this weekend, we're getting the DMC collaboration where you can get an armor set that turns you into Dante. And nice. you can get an emote oh, nice. where you, you get an emote where you fire two guns to your to your left and right. Even though you're wearing a, a sword set? Yeah, yeah. You, you will just pull out two pistols. And it does damage. Like, it actually does damage. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Thankfully, those are not locked into loot boxes because... Oh, has there been pretty terrible, terrible loot boxes out there? And now the government has taken action. Well, government in South Korea. Uh, and the Netherlands, actually, I should add. Well, uh, the first story here is about, as I said, mentioned earlier, uh, Nexon, among two other South Korean developers, were fined pretty hefty because of uh, not disclosing their... Loot drops properly. Hmm. Hmm. So that it was it was next zone, net bubble, and next floor. Most of these uh, developers we don't know much because they only operate on in South Korea. So next zone is the only name that we are familiar. And but next zone is South Korea. I I thought they were Chinese. No, they're South. Yeah, they're South Korea. Oh, yeah, okay, South Korea. I keep mistaking them for ExxonMobil, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they get fined by the government. Mm -hmm. They're, they're the FTC of South Korea, basically. Oh, okay. The number is 945,000 uh, USD, but I think it, it was in won. It was around bil a billion or a million won, something like that. It's a big amount. Lah. It's Ooh. really hefty a fine for next zone. Night Marble, next floor, uh, it's a bit... Uh, they don't have that much of a fine, but still, they got fined. So basically, yeah, they did not disclose one of their... You say they, there's a limited time event. So in particular, this one is for Nexon. Nexon has uh, 
a game called Sudden Attack. Basically, they are version of Counter Strike. <laughs> to put it lightly, yeah, popular. yeah, pretty popular. Very and, popular. And one of the events called Celebrity Count is that you can buy loot boxes and to get a chance to get like uh, loot drops. And the loot drops is in the form of puzzle pieces where if you collect them all, you'll get some other rewards, really, really good rewards. But uh, similar to Fat Go, they uh, this is not waifu lah. But the the puzzle pieces uh have a uh, different dro- uh, drop rates, and some of them are less than advertised, and the sound pretty low. Can okay, can can I ask something? So they open loot box, they get puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if they assemble the puzzle piece, do they get random items too? That that I the reports are not clear about that because a lot of the reports are mostly cause focusing on the on the find itself rather than the mechanics of the event. I can't find much about what the, what the, the the in particular the details of the event. But a lot of the sources say is customization items or items that give you advantage, something like that. It's items lah, items that you really want. So it can be anything. <laughs> Pretty shady. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. pretty shady stuff. It's Jack the Ripper in there, though. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Jack the Ripper will win over these puzzle pieces, even if the loop uh, drop rates are low. Yeah, the drop rates are so low that you go to another game to try and get Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this the first time South Korea finding a developer for not disclosing drop rates? It seems so, and it is one of the first after the whole loot box debacle of 2017. Mm, okay. uh, because, so, in, because in China, every developer with a uh, randomized mechanic are uh, re- required to disclose their drop chance. So this mm. South Korea is following suit from China, I think. Yeah, true, true, true. True. I feel like I don't, I don't have any data to back this up, but yeah, South Korea generally treats gaming like seriously, doesn't it? Because they had that whole thing was where Diablo 3 wasn't allowed to have its uh, marketplace in South Korea because no, you're playing a game, you shouldn't be making money from it without like going through the proper paperwork. Yeah. Wow. Even boosting is considered a crime. Boosting yeah, actual games a crime. South Korea like treats gaming serious. Maybe the boosting thing is a bit serious. It's a bit yeah. silly, but yeah. It's glad to see that they're like enforcing this kind of shit because that's how you keep loot boxes in check. You, you... How about the Netherlands? Yeah, the I... Netherlands also are declaring that some of the loot boxes are illegal and they too are taking action. Mm. From what I read, from what I read, uh, they are banning. That they say they they are putting control on. Uh, loot box which uh, the items are tradable so things like CSGO uh, crates that one is a no-go in Netherlands because it's Yo. considered gambling the, the, the idea is that if you can take out the items from the system and gain monetary value it's illegal yeah. yes mm. yeah you can't cash out essentially yeah, yeah. so no steam workshop uh, create something. <laughs> Wait, did you disclose the game that was uh, in the list, or did you just uh, they just like Chonto, Chonto, ah, Chonto, ah, that's right. Not so sure, but from the reports I've g- gathered, they don't really name much of the games. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad people are like there's. Shit's happening to loot boxes. Like, hey, congrats. You're done fucked up. <laughs> I mean, they went overboard, so yeah, they got it coming. And now the, the government thing. are coming. The, the game industry is to... not self regulating, so the government is coming to regulate. It's mm-hmm. not a good thing, anyways. Uh, it used to be self regulating, just that they didn't want to self regulate this, and now yeah. they're getting. Now they're getting what happens when they don't want to. They try to push it too far, and yes, they went too far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's no going back. Yep, yep. 
I mean, I, I still hope, like, because I don't think Malaysian politicians are very good at regulating regulating shit. <laughs> no, in B4, they best team again. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, will, they will regulate if they don't get uh, uh, they don't get a cut from it. If they get a cut from it, it's fine. You know what? Conspiracy, mm-hmm. theory, conspiracy theory? Conspiracy theory? You know why Malaysia don't have fit grand order? Because one politician doesn't want us to play as to get our Jack the Ripper waifus. <laughs> no man, it's because he didn't get Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get my Jack the Ripper. Nobody can. <laughs> also, I don't get nobody can. <laughs> Speaking of non relegate uh, re- 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 oh, come on, I cannot pronounce it. Re- regulation. <laughs> Self regulation. <laughs> There's another government in Cuba that does not regulate any kind of gaming. So, people can do basically anything they want, such as... This is my favorite are, news story. They are very own underground <laughs> gaming network. Good God. The Cuba, title you bad. are the nerdiest country in the world and I love it for this. <laughs> the title is barely there in the, in the video. Sure, but yeah, here we go. So, basically, this is cloth map. And that's doing the coverage. Cloth Map is a basically a YouTube series of travel logs from the point of view of gaming, and mm-hmm. it is hosted by Drew Scanlon. You you may know as that blonde guy in GiantBomb.com, or or that blinking white guy meme. <laughs> blinking white guy meme. That blinking uh... white guy meme actually does travel logs now. Where did the where did the Blinking white guy meme actually come from? I have no clue. From a stream yeah. in Jayabo.com. Ah. <laughs> uh. And it has something to do with Terraria for some reason. But anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway... So in Cuba, people don't... Uh, the internet is rubbish. So when the gamers there, what they oh. do... They make their own LAN, basically a LAN, where you can connect into this a uh, lot of nodes. And then they can just share the games together and then do play online in, in LAN. So they play World of Warcraft, they play PES and FIFA, they play Call of Duty. It's pretty interesting. And the idea is that it's basically self-regulating. The cops are there, they know, they can see all those wires up there are basically illegal, technically speaking. But they just, huh, okay, as long as you don't do anything shady, okay. No politics, eh? okay. Imagine if you did that. Let's say we created up a bunch of people and then we do our own underground network. 110%. Yeah, what was I like? 110% get sued. Can. <laughs> we get, they're gonna get a uh, letter from MCMC. Illegal network, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then they, they get on the network and it's all just Jack the Ripper and they're like, why? <laughs> why did you waste our time like this? <laughs> It's an interesting story you know, because you don't expect to see. You know how Cuba is basically a bit uh, behind the times because they o- only recently opened up with their, their government, mm-hmm. their their, pol- uh, their international policies, stuff like that, right? So to yeah. see... Yeah. To see them... I, I believe... Yeah. yeah. I believe uh, other than games, they also have like uh, a pass, pass around Netflix uh something they, they share movies around because they have slow internet so they have these runners uh with subscription service of uh new movies new tv shows from us they put it in hard drive and stuff and they sell it i think yeah. it's cute in cuba it's, yeah similar Wait, to... are we doing that now here <laughs> no they don't have the uncle pasamalam dude they do they don't yeah, have uh, yeah they don't have uncle pasamalam dudes no they can't because uh shops are regulated Ah, no, so... it, uh, in the in the documentary, uh, Drew also mentioned that he can't buy, uh, sorry, he can't buy uh stuff from some of the government shops because it's only served for the people there. So, but people who with passports who are not not uh locals couldn't buy anything. They can just browse. Ah, uh, that's so, interesting. It's a way that oh, the government knows that they are incompetent at delivering this. So, and people want that thing. Ah, go ahead. Ah. As long as you don't, don't, no politics, eh? Okay, go. No <laughs> uprising, okay? Okay, Fine. okay. You have your video game as long as you follow the government. Uh. 
is an interesting location. Is an interesting country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, mm-hmm. image... that's, a, that's a a pleasant news story. Like I like that. There's there's something weirdly punk rock about opening your own your own land. It's a human yeah. thing. It's like people will do anything for their passion. Yeah. True, and, true. Uh, and people yeah. will do anything for their passion. Anan 2018. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anything for Jack the Ripper. That's where Rule 34 exists. Yep, yep. Rule 34, Jack the Ripper. I mean, the official stuff is pretty Rule 34 already, so... Fair point. Well, Remember, safe search filter off. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> well, in terms of... Uh... Playing together, not not about Jack the Ripper. Eh? In terms of playing together before, <laughs> we've talked about. No, I do that alone. Mm. <laughs> Keep our businesses alone. Mm. In terms of do, how much I have to repeat this? Ah, okay. Dauntless, the other monster <laughs> of the game is finally coming out of open beta next month. Oh, I did not. I how did I miss this news? That's interesting. It's a pretty cool news because. The game was announced before Monster Hunter World exists, so this was poised to be. Oh, this is the Monster Hunter for PC that we all been waiting for. Oops! And then <laughs> Capcom was like, "This is the Monster Hunter on PC you've all been waiting." And then that got delayed. And then Dauntless mm-hmm. comes back. Oh, this is the Monster Hunter for you. <laughs> so basically, yeah, uh, the game was uh, uh is currently in uh, closed beta. You can actually play it right now, but you have to pay the founder's pack. So you get a lot of cool customizations as well, so, and you get to play early. But if you are cheap and would like to wait a bit more until the game is more polished, open beta opens next month. So as the name implies, it's open beta. Everyone can join and give yeah. it a go. Mm. And the game it's is free, is it? The open beta? Yes. And the game itself will be free. Hmm. And, okay. mm, and the, the business model is also similar to Monster Hunter in terms of they will only sell cosmetics. They actually oh. scrap loot boxes. They had that yeah. uh, they had that in mind and then they saw the apocalypse coming and they dodged a bullet. <laughs> dodged a bullet rest. A big, big bullet. May twenty fourth. Uh, they have to release, yeah. Happy they have to release it really quickly because Monster Hunter World for PC is coming out in August, so they have like next month. So they miss around three months. To yeah, make sure they have three months to release. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Hmm. Wow, have you, you followed Donders enough to see how it goes? Not really, because uh, because I have a PC, but it's like. I have to dual boot my computer essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Mac. This Mac. But, yeah. No, don't blame but me. So... <laughs> <laughs> but so once the <laughs> once the beta comes out, I'll I'll probably check it out. Download it for like a week or so, and then check it out, and then go back to Monster Hunter World because uh, God, Capcom owns my soul now. Was this was this new update they they really? <laughs> So are you going to write a notice? Hi Capcom, I'm, going, I'm taking a week off to play uh, Dauntless. Thanks. Yeah, I, have, I have to apply for leave, that's it. I have to apply for leave from Capcom. <laughs> you will not work for Capcom. You have to work <laughs> for your enjoyment. <laughs> but yeah, like, like long G update, yeah. If it sounds, uh, if it sounds great enough, maybe we can yeah, party up and try it out together. Sounds yeah, like yeah. a cool game to try out. A big deal. Hmm. But the next story here is about people not going to games. <laughs> oh. Instead, they want to sit back and watch the World Cup. Hold on, I need to set this up. And probably you guys already know the topic is about THQ Nordic. E- essentially saying, no, we are not attending E3. Why? World Cup, baby. World Cup. I keep forgetting this year is a World Cup year. Mm-hmm. Uh, THQ is quickly becoming my second favorite publisher after Devolver. Wait, I didn't TH, isn't THQ gone? Like, didn't... Yeah, yeah, they, yeah uh, they're back now. 
Yeah, the uh, Nordic yeah, Entertainment Board uh, THQ and uh, the name uh, So THQ is dead. Nordic and uh, Dead Silver own a lot of their IPs, but Nordic, Nordic Games, which is based in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> the most mm-hmm. Nordic of the countries. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Basically, own the THQ name, and after a few while uh, getting back a lot of THQ backlogs that they have, uh, being released back mm-hmm. into the source, into Steam and, and such, they just rebrand themselves. Hey, we are now THQ Nordic. We use even they use the same logo as well. They just put it Nordic at the back. That's really cool. Mm. And now they are saying. Uh, we we are not doing E3. We uh, for announcements wait for Gamescom, basically. Yeah, but I think I, no, in general good. people are avoiding E3. Yeah, uh, because E3 is kind of just like kind of douchey, you know. Psst, someone send us to E3. Said they send. they send Francisco Comic Con, is it? Yeah, San Diego. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con. It's like mm. it's it's the enormous stuff now rather than <laughs> this. Because I think yeah. because Ichi opened it to public last year, and so yeah. uh, he lost the charm already. Yeah, no. What was a media only event is now is now full of streamers with their GoPros and their yeah, yeah, boys. <laughs> but still, uh, in terms of consistency, actually THQ Nordic last year they made their biggest announcements back in Gamescom. They announced Biomutant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, announce what, sorry? Bio Mutant is basically the next game by former Just Cause developers and open world Ooh. RPG where you get to mutate yourself and get Kung Fu powers. That sounds amazing. amazing. Prototype? I just want, like, it's... I just want just cause, but instead of guns, it's it's bio powers. Oh, well, that's your game. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping so. That that sounds that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. And yeah, this is pretty a pretty wholesome news because if even if it's ridiculous, you just can't point out stuff. Because, <laughs> but you know what is ridiculous, and you can point out stuff. This next news. This ah, next news. God, this is yeah. This is the the big one. The and big news. All other news does not matter compared to this. I'm just going to put the tweet here, and wham! You can start your start your opening ah, opening. I don't, I, I don't even know how to. Oh, like Goomba. I'm a fan of this. I, <laughs> it's like why. I don't, Why, internet? I don't know listen, how to talk about it. Many years ago, many years ago, we were gifted this beautiful thing called the internet. And oh. it gave us so many great things. It gave us this podcast, for example. It gave yeah. us Netflix. It gave us comics that I can read on my phone. And then one day, it decided, I don't care if you want this or not. I'm going to give you strip Fortnite. <laughs> Why? So, unlike you guys, I am a journalist, and I had to go and investigate this and make sure it was a real thing. This is too spicy for me. I give up. And... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this section won't be cut. Now, uh, I couldn't find any of the videos from this, from the thumbnail, uh, from, uh, from the tweet that you're finding, but Strip Fortnite is a thing. My god, it is a thing. And I had to watch one of these videos. Uh, I can't remember his name. It's like Rice something. I'm, I'm not even going to bother crediting you because you made a shitty thing. Oh, no, and it's no. just the... no. Our shit posts are better than him. Exactly. We have the more high ground. So apparently it's like you get a kill and then a pretty girl has to start stripping. And the first dude that I watched... It's like he was recruiting a girl for this, like someone he knows with her consent, obviously. And it's like, uh, let me let me just pull this up right now. God, I hate that this is in my. I should have made like an alt YouTube account so that I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to deal with this. Wait, so your ads are now about stripping or what? <laughs> Probably. 
Probably. I hey, hate. No. I'm Jack the stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you look Pull it up, down the you cable cut. <laughs> no, but so like first off, like yeah, the dude's name is Rice Gum. The first video that I watched. Oh yeah, the Rice oh, Gum. This guy. <laughs> rice Gum. Yeah, I, I I hate him so much. Just hearing his voice pisses me off. I'm just skipping through the video. He's got he's got a girl next to him, and. At some point, they're like sensor bars. I'm not gonna bother watching this whole thing. So they, but yeah, it is a literal strip. It's not just yeah, for gimmicks. She's, act, she's actually naked. I I guess we still need to actually watch the video, but I'm pretty sure this is in violation of Twitch at least, and maybe YouTube. I don't know. Man. I'm surprised this hasn't caught up in the age of the adpocalypse. Watching, mm-hmm. watching a YouTuber people. talk, like I, I have the, the sound off. Obviously, it just makes <laughs> me hate it. I hate this so much. I hate the exaggerated hand motions. I hate everything. I hate the wannabe gangsterness. Why, <laughs> that? We could be, we could have cured cancer by now. Instead, we have strip Fortnite. And of all the games. I mean, well, obviously, they chose the best Battle Royale to to make a strip game out of. No, because it, PUBG sucks. No, imagine it was strip PUBG and we'll just... It was it's an even worse shit, ho- uh, shit show. No, I can't comment no. much about this because your manner how you slice it, this is stupid, man. Yeah. I can't add <sighs> much into the argument. It's basically a done deal. And we all know Jack the Ripper is the best waifu, much clearer than this. Yes. But what What's even more interesting is I I found another video that wasn't rice gum, uh-huh. and it was this other girl, and this this was the more interesting strip Fortnite thing, because it wasn't the streamer using her, but she's a huge fan of Ninja, so she was like, "I'm going." It's a it's reaction video plus. Where she was watching a ninja stream, and every time ninja gets a kill, she would strip. That's uh... God damn it, man! <laughs> that is genius. That is. That's I am like twist. this is still dumb, but this is genius. I mean, quality content, by the way. <laughs> Very quality. It's like why? Ugh, and also, if your video has to say insane ending at the end of it then yeah your video is shit eat, eat a dick rice gum i don't like you fuck out of here <laughs> we're starting the beefs humanity and, that is... and that's what's the story humanity may be lost but and yeah meteor we're ready just just whenever you're ready meteor just crush us all and when the meteor drops, humanity may be lost, but we all can all feel safe and sound knowing that Shemu is safe. Yee! Shemu 1 and 2 will be remastered for consoles and PC just in time Yee. for Shenmu 3. I mean, there's. Was that ever in question? Like. Oh look, a game that hasn't had a sequel for years is getting a sequel. I hope they make a they remake this for consoles too. Like yeah, that was It was, that was gonna be It was. You need to watch back the E3 2015 reaction. Uh there is a video on the our docket. Yeah. It this is a very good very that was a very good reaction. From one of the biggest fans of Shemu, it was a game. Uh, it was a game trailers video. People are losing their minds. This that year is. Uh, that year was the announcement of the Last Guardian is actually a thing, and will be out. And then the announcement of Final Fantasy VII remake is actually a thing. Though we all know that the right now, uh, both things are not as good, but still, that that moment, that reaction at that moment, it was so crazy. And the last drum to bo- uh, last bomb to drop, last drop to bomb, was Shenmue 3. 
Sure, it was a Kickstarter, but but still, the announcement that Shenmue Three is a team drove people in tears. <sighs> no, to the what? to the point that the the there was a long long hashtag of hashtag Save Shenmue because this game was in limbo for so long, to the point that Mega Sixty Four has to make a parody about it, and they even brought Yu Suzuki, the creator of Shenmue, to write a stupid silly ending. On what his vision of Shemu Tree is, and it's basically uh, a story about the protagonist becomes a Terminator and something like that. It was a joke story, lah. It it was that kind of fervor about around this uh, around this franchise. Even though it's not uh, uh in retrospect, it's not that good. If you like jumped in, uh, like right now, if you like okay, like the new remaster is coming out, right? If you jump in right now, you will probably feel the jack. A lot of the game is about uh, searching for sailors, uh, bad voice acting, driving forklifts, play, uh, hitting quick time events, and this is the game that actually started the whole quick time events thing uh, on modern consoles. Uh. Mm, yeah, I have, I have three words for the people excited for Shenmue Three: Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, even if you look at the quality of Shamu Three right now, uh, oh, even the, the even the first few images, the first few videos is terrible. We can't deny that. But still, oh, people God. are they, they are strong, strong, hardcore fans around this game that is the worst version of Yakuza. <laughs> That's a no, 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 The combat much more satisfying to play in. The story is more gripping and much more for forward moving. You don't have a lot too long of lull moments. It's basically hmm. the, the the proto yakuza. The proto then. <laughs> Even uh, yeah, because it's still by Sega, and after you Suzuki left, this is the project uh, that went on become yakuza. I mean the 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 foundations you can find it there. Hmm. Well, it's now we can know clear percent how good or bad it is. <laughs> But to be frank, it's bad now. <laughs> nah, it's an experience, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean, if you experience, if you have no knowledge about this game, uh, I I assure you to not check it out. <laughs> just just follow it from afar, because yeah, I'm not playing it. <laughs> it. It it doesn't hold up well. Uh, for from my from my for my opinion on my opinion. Yeah, I would not think it. <laughs> But still, to consider that actually, uh, Sega putting up the effort to put the remaster out, uh, despite them not actually publishing Shenmue Three. Shenmue Three is not the publisher Sony. Sega. Uh, Sony puts uh, not they don't have the. I don't think it's uh, they are no, the it's publisher. Yeah, YS.net something eh? Yeah, uh, YS.net is basically a new studio by Yu Suzuki lah. Wait, Yu Suzuki or Yu YS? <laughs> exactly. Ah oh, shit! I just realized that <laughs> three years later, I realized. Uh, so it's more like a a No Man's Sky situation where Sony is putting up some of the bill, but they are not directly uh publishing it, which is They're a very comparison. <laughs> They'll take credit for it if it goes well, but in the very likely chance that it doesn't, we have nothing to do with this. <laughs> And we just promote it. That's all. Mm. Yeah, we do. We just promoted it. Ah, Shenmue. But you know what? The that E three announcement was so magical. And actually, you know that there's actually another game that was supposed to be unveiled at that uh, at that time, but didn't get made the cut. Mm-hmm. It was the yeah. it was the crash uh, in Centrology. You know how they oh, keep on teasing. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Do you know how they keep on teasing the game for quite a while? Uh? They were supposed to be revealing it at E3 2015, but uh, things didn't work out as it should at the moment. So it got delayed and delayed and delayed. 
But hey, it's out now. But you know what's not out now? No. Uh, anything. Lots of things. Lots of things. <laughs> what's out now? What's not out now? Is the other half of Sony's PS1 mascot, Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> the way you phrase that was so weird. It makes me think like the half a dragon body dangling in the Sony office. <laughs> I'm working on the fly here because I'm also doing this thing. <laughs> so the segways didn't hit as, it didn't land as well as I wanted, but there you go. Yeah, yeah Spyro's getting a remaster. We're getting, we're slowly getting all the mascot platformers back. They'll all be remastered. And then we'll all realize that they need a lot of work. The pre- yeah. the prequel to Skylanders Spyro trilogy. Yeah, oh, the prequel no. to Skylanders. It's exactly. That. Will it be out? <laughs> and you know what? This is should be a good game. And speaking of that, the developers of Skylanders are handling this. Toys for Bob. I'm. I was gonna say. I hope there is Skylander support. Like you can actually like plug in the thing and you get a a nice Easter egg if you do. That would be funny, and I want it. That would be funny, but I will be, I will be torn apart because I want my classic Spyro experience back. I grew up no, with no, this shit. I want it pure. No, no, have it be, have it be exactly the same. It's just that if you plug in the Skylanders thing and put a Spyro figure on it, you get like, the game's just like, ha ha ha, nice. Wait. <laughs> Amiibo style. Yeah. I mean, compared to Crash, Crash was pretty much dormant when Activision get the handle of it. But Spyro, you know that after the first three games on PS1 and one or two games on the PS2, they made another trilogy of oh. wait, Elijah Wood voicing one of the characters. I don't know if he voiced Spyro. Elijah or, Wood. Yeah. Elijah Wood, yeah. Which was pretty weird. And I think one of them was a character action game. What the heck? <laughs> Spyro of War. <laughs> Spyro of War. Spyro had an identity crisis. And then it becomes Skylanders. Uh, uh, I mean, I heard from what I've heard, Skylanders is not bad. Yeah, it's okay. But Spyro, man. Ooh, this is my childhood, man. You know that uh, back in uh, around the, that time, 97, 98, when demo discs are a thing, right? For PS1. Mm-hmm. And then uh, those European magazines have them. Yeah. And I actually got one and I played the heck out of Spyro in black and white. <laughs> Why? Because Why back I? because back then, you know that how TVs in uh US uh, uh the rest of the world and Europe are different. Pa- uh, you, in Europe oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. PAL <laughs> PAL is fifty uh fifty hertz. And if you put in a PS one game that is not uh is a different region, you get the black and white screen. The the that game was that the game was fine. It's just black and white. <laughs> mm. uh. because of the uh, different region have different color because we we are using PAL. Maybe the this is NTSC, so different. No, uh, is the other way around. Yeah, other way around. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but yeah, that 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 is basically the thing lah. Back back at the time. So when I actually found the copy of Spyro the Dragon and actually he's purple and the whole world is green and oh my god oh, this is this is why Spyro is so close to my heart huh? because I play in black and white and love it we need to commission an artist to make a Spyro Dakikamu Dakimakura for me yeah. get him get him a Spyro body pillow Give him Ethan Rex. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, no. So on one side it's Spyro, and on the other side it's black and white Spyro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I have so many ideas for the thumbnail. <laughs> I have so many material to work with. 
<laughs> yeah, man, it's like Jack the Ripper and Spyro in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how you know how one of the uh, one of the uh, big uh, screenshot from God of War, like Kratos, like pull it, putting his arms toward in front, and like he was that he was to touch the tree or something, eh? <laughs> the Daki Mora goes there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. It's Jack the Ripper is so... <laughs> one body pillow has Jack the Ripper and the other one has Pyro on it. <laughs> <laughs> and Kratos wears a game play card with plenty to low friending. <laughs> I like it. This is this is a great this is a great idea. And you know what? When we talk about thumbnails. That means we are mm-hmm. in the end of our episode. Around two hours mark from from what I see so far. Probably a bit shorter, probably a bit longer. But yeah, we hit that ballpark. Ooh. <sighs> And I probably didn't cough on stream. Nope, nope. Ha, good, good, no. good, because I had some oh, very, very killer coughs. That you should not know of. So let's wrap it up. Wrap it up with the plugins and promos. So setting it up, shield stuff. Shield. Yes. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Wamiro. Give me money on Patreon or on Coffee or follow my Facebook page because I'm constantly getting zucked and having zero reach. Zuck. <laughs> yep. Zucked. Um. Because convention season is coming up, which means I will be hearing back from shit soon, which means I will spend a lot of money on art booths and merchandise printing. Also, if you want any kind of, any special merch from me, let me know because I'm open to suggestions on what to make. I might actually make a Jack the Ripper if I could. Yes, <laughs> I was going to I'll ask about that. Oh God. But yeah, that's all my stuff. Also, uh, if you're Malaysian and over 20 and a registered voter, May 9th, May 9th, right? That's that's when yeah, uh, May 9th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have a we have our elections coming up. Go and fucking vote, you you fucking twat. Do do it. Research, research like all the parties competing, and then vote. Make an educated guess and vote. Do it, <laughs> you fucking pansies. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daniel, where can we get your stuff? What? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Flaky F L four K Y. And for this week, I want to shout out to our uh, what our other member. Uh, if you do not know, his name is Irham. He's currently, if I'm, if Discord is playing right, playing Warhammer. Warhammer. So, well, you know what to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's Bring different it. Warhammer though. War, no. Warhammer Fantasy. I I play 40k. No, it ties him to go 40 years over. 40,000 years over. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have currently installed him as the head of social media against our better wishes. And <laughs> so you can expect to see more shit posts. On facebookcom slash matters It's a good thing we're getting zapped, so we don't have like we don't have to worry too much about our pride going down. Nah. And Anan, what's going on with you? Rip in peace, Anan. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So basically, if I was Anand, I would be wrapping my Facebook, which is should be in the links uh, on the video. Probably, mm-hmm. I will make effort for that, and also I will uh, ask people to talk to me about masters and probably yeah. graphics cards. Yeah, yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. That sounds like an Anand thing to do. Well, that's an Anand thing to do, and the Mac thing to do is to say. And you can find me at Amirul Macronos Ashraf. That's Macronos M E C K R O N O S. You can find me almost anywhere on social media with that name. And yeah, I forgot. I forgot my mic was on. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, did, did you see it? Did you clap because you see it? 
<laughs> no, no, that that was a that was a bug exploding. Yeah. Uh, okay. I thought you saw it, so you have to clap. And that's uh, okay. <clears throat> that's the show. <clears throat> Leave a comment. Leave a comment if you like it. If you watched it. Uh, if you're currently at the mainframe streamer thing, eh, nice, I guess. And there you go, Dire.log, the Game of Matters podcast comes to a close. And that's it, guys. Bye-bye. Toodles. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. <sighs> Kain pelikat la 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 la.